Hello and welcome back and today I want to do another NAS comparison. I want to face off the two old adversaries QNAP and Synology and today I want to talk about the old versus the new. Today I want to talk about the brand new QNAP TS251D and how it compares with the current standard 2 bay from Synology, the DS218+. Plus. Now the word you want to focus on there is the word standard because first and foremost neither of these are the most powerful 2 bays that those respective brands have put out there and that case you could look at the 253BE or the DS718 Plus. The reason I'm focusing on these two is because of one, they're incredibly similar price points and two, they're incredibly similar demographics. And now Synology have kind of pumped the brakes a little bit on their hardware releases in terms of disk station devices over the last few years. We got used to a number of their Plus series devices arriving every two years on a certain sequence. But the DS218 uh, Plus here is over three and a bit years old right now. And although uh, almost certainly there will be a follow-up to it very soon, right now this is the standard 2 bait from Synology that you need to go for. Now in the case of the QNAP, in the QNAP standard 2 bait stakes, this is the TS251D. It was released uh, around about a week and a half ago at the time of the recording of this video. And it is the follow-up to the TS251B that was released around 14 months prior to that. So QNAP have definitely released a little bit more hardware and they've always been kind of known as a brand that's focused a lot on their hardware. So maybe that's one of the reasons behind it or maybe just because they're capitalizing on new trends or just because they thought this one would sell better, who knows? But these two right now are the two main standard two bays that you need to go for right now in 2020. Because although there are other NAS brands out there, none of them give you as much hardware and software combined within that purchase price as these two. Now I keep using that word standard. The reason being is these are for people that are trying to make either their first or maybe second step into the world of NAS, but don't want to break the bank, but do want lots of features. Because although there are a number of cost-effective solutions like the TS230 and the uh, DS220J, there are some cost-effective ones out there that give you a lot of bang for your buck in terms of value, these are the ones that will give you a lot of bang for your buck in terms of hardware and performance. So, what are they? Well, this one, uh, the TS251D, uh, retails for about 260 to 270 quid. This two bay without the VAT and the local tax or whatever you're paying your own area. And that doesn't include hard drive media either. The DS218 Plus arrives uh, a little bit cheaper than that. It arrives around 250 to 260 but it's so close in price as it makes no difference. And particularly given the age difference between them, it's quite impressive to see that that price point has still been kept. And if you look at most standard two bays, and I will be comparing the new QNAP against a lot of them, and I'm including Terramata's F2, and of course Acer Store's Nimbus Store 2, they all arrive at that 250, 260, 270 mark. That's kind of the industry agreement of standard two bay prices. So what do you get for your money? Well, let's go with the old first. We'll go with the Synology one. It's still a cracking NAS. The T DS218 Plus was in my top two bays for almost, yeah, for three years running. It's just a great standard NAS. It arrived with the Intel Celeron J3355 dual-core processor. It's a 2.0 gigahertz um, dual-core uh, CPU that can be burst up to 2.5. Uh, it is a 64-bit Intel um, architecture processor. It's got a transcoding engine and can transcode 4K media as well as well as 1080p, of course. It's also included with 2 gig of DDR3L memory that can be upgraded officially to 6 gig of memory, which is a bit odd, but I'll get to that later on. Um, in terms of its own external internal hardware, we'll talk about the port in a little bit, but really I wanted to talk about the CPU and the memory because that's one of the things that's really changed in the last few years when it's come to NAS hardware. The kind of the processors and the memory that's being utilized, as well as the ports, of course, that I'll touch on later. The reason that's important is because NASes are designed to be on 24-7, like all day, all week, all month, often all year. The result being that that hardware has to be long-term conscious. It has to uh, be very energy efficient and the chassis design and the components used have to be designed in a way that they're not going to utilize loads of power or be sus um, um, you know, uh, suffer 
hardware degradation due to heat and just long-term dust and stuff like that. So the components they use very rarely will have to compare with the likes of power PCs, you know, XPS gaming laptops and high-end rigs. They are designed to be efficient. That's why you'll see a lot of processors and memory uh, quantities that you would often find in laptops or in tablets and mobiles designed to be long-term. But what they get out of them is the most important. So that the reason I'm telling you all of that is since the, um, the 2017 release, of the DS218 Plus, things have changed a lot. And in the QNAP, it arrives with a brand new CPU. It's a Celeron again, but this time it's the 4000 series, the J4005. Only about the second or third time I've seen this processor in NAS, but it's going to get real popular real quick, and it will not surprise me if that processor is in the next Synology either. On top of that, the uh, 251D arrives with 2 gig of DDR4 memory, a higher frequency, more efficient memory that can be upgraded up to 8 gig. So that CPU uh, arrives with a 2.0 gigahertz um, speed and a dual core processor, but we could be uh, clocked up via a turbo to 2.7 gigahertz. So as you can see, typically you are getting a hell of a lot out of that processor more than the, its predecessor. And the previous unit before this utilized the same CPU as the DS218 Plus as well. We're getting bogged down a bit in hardware. Don't worry, it's not all going to be about hardware. I just thought you guys, your PC builders, a lot of you, you love hardware. But ultimately, in terms of internal hardware, if you wanted to judge these two, and particularly in versus between price as well, you are getting a hell of a lot more in terms of hardware from that QNAP right now. And that's not just internally, but externally as well. I know I'm using a graphic today for the Synology because I didn't have one in the studio. But... In terms of um, just the ports, it is definitely a big, big difference. And there's going to be a little bit of personal preference about that as well. But if we look at the front of these chassis, we look at the front of the QNAP there, we can see that it has got uh, a front-mounted one-touch copy button. We have got LEDs built into the front there for system access, drive access, and more. Lots of indicators there. And a power button there at the top. The one-touch copy button, also present on the uh, Synology as well, allows you to connect external drives and either back up the NAS to them or back up the external drive to the NAS at the click of a button. And you can set them up to be differential backups. You can set them up to be a completely separate backup every time. It's really easy, really straightforward. It's a plastic white chassis. It's got that blue metallic strip on the front. And the drive tray is by unlocking the front, removing the magnetic front panel, and you've got your two drive trays inside. And both of those are click and load hard drives. Now, again, I do apologize for not having the DS218 Plus here in the studio with me, but the DS218 Plus, to be honest, the graphics say enough about the design for you. The external chassis is black. It's got that side ventilated panel, the Synology logo. Uh, the front panel there is a lovely, sharp feel to it. I remember when I first talked about it here on the channel, I compared it to that Robocop reboot, um, kind of the attitude towards the old Robocop and the new. I love that front panel. It's lovely. It's really nice. It removes off the front. It's not magnetic but it's kind of held in with rubberized grips around the side. And the inside, you've got those two click and load trays. The front of it has got those LED lights, it's got a power button, and it's got a one-touch copy button there on the front. So in terms of the front of these chassis, things are very much the same. But if we look at the rear of these devices, and hopefully the graphic on screen has now changed accordingly, we can see the ports are where things differ greatly with these two devices. If we go with the Synology first, we can see that it's got a single gigabit LAN port, it's got USB 3.0 there on the rear, and it's got an eSATA port for attaching an expansion device, although the device cannot be expanded. It will only view the expansion device, the DX517, as uh, a just a standard ex um, external storage device. It won't see it as complete expandable space where you can add drives to your existing RAID level, and we will talk about RAID later on. With the QNAP, we've got the same ports, We've got USB 3, we've got um, the single gigabit LAN, we don't have eSATA, but what we do have is more USB, although USB 2 to be admit, you know, we've got to address that. A single gigabit LAN, so none of your increased gigabit LAN speeds on this, and a PCIe slot there at the top. Now, that PCIe slot is important because it gives you the ability to upgrade this device. I've already talked about how the uh, memory can be upgraded on this device, but the true upgradability of that NAS 
is to do with that PCIe slot. The PCIe slot on the side allows you to upgrade network interface ports. It allows you to install SSD PCIe supported cards. It lets you install wireless cards. It lets you install more LAN ports of 2.5, 1GB or 5GB, however you see fit. It allows support of many, many PCIe cards, even combined cards with 10GBE and M2 NVMe SSD cache on a single card to be installed inside. That's a PCIe times two times four slot, or Gen two times four slot. But I mean, in terms of ports, and I haven't even mentioned the HDMI port, because let's face it, the HDMI port on this device stands alone on its own because the HDMI port allows you to connect a visual interface, a keyboard and a mouse or a controller and have a complete localized standalone system that's great for surveillance, great for VMs, great for zero latency enjoying of your multimedia, your 4K, your 1080p, that sort of thing. There's a whole separate portal for it. And I seem like I'm really banging on about this thing, but it's just in terms of hardware, you are getting more for your money. But it's not all about hardware between these two. Let's face it, it's also about software. Quick cut there, I realised my lighting was going crazy. It's a new studio, I'm just getting working out all the kinks, but we'll carry on. So, in terms of these two and software, that's where things become remarkably even. Because even though the QNAP arrives with much newer hardware, the Synology definitely takes advantage of hardware internally a great deal more. The DSM platform from Synology is still probably the very best software platform out there. QNAP and Synology have narrowed the gap significantly between them with QNAP's own software, QTF 4.4.1, really innovating and becoming its own beast. It is an insane platform and some of the applications are genuinely brand unique. I cannot recommend them enough. But if you're new to NAS, you're probably going to be drawn more to the Synology software just because it's chewable and usable and easy and friendly. Also, they have more applications that can replace your existing uh, uh, library of applications. So if you're using a lot of cloud services uh, for uh, communication within your company, then the, the QNAP gives you, oh, sorry, the Synology gives you more options in terms of software to replace them. I talked about it in other videos before, but they've got um, applications such as Synology Chat, which serves as a replacement for WhatsApp and Skype in your business environment for mobile and desktop client platforms, allowing everyone to communicate and share files. They have got the Synology Office application, which is a great substitute for Microsoft Office and Google Docs to allow you to edit files with their own proprietary software, all within the network without using the internet. They've got Synology Drive. With Synology Drive, you've got this great user interface that compares to the likes of Google Drive, Dropbox, and, and, and you know, just this incredibly user-friendly way of accessing all of your files via a single portal with all the proprietary applications included to open everything from PDFs to XLSs to um, doc files to photos to music to video, all within the single portal. Along with that, Synology Drive has client applications for PC and Mac to create a folder on your localized system where you can interact with your NAS in a pinned file and um, streaming file structure. It's really, really impressive and definitely something that they've done a lot of research into with their own proprietary apps. Same goes for surveillance. The surveillance station application on the Synology platform currently is probably the best Synology, uh, sorry, the best NAS surveillance software I've seen. And again, QNAP are getting damn close now and I will get to that in a little bit because I reckon not even a year from now I'm not going to be able to give an advantage to Synology over QNAP in terms of software it's just going to be a flat tie but we'll get to that in a bit um but the surveillance platform with the Synology is first class with surveillance station being probably the most user friendly out there both the client application for PC and Mac the mobile applications and even accessing it via the web browser giving you unparalleled access to your cameras and control and live feeds via the web browser more so than any other NAS brand. And along with that, things like Active Backup Suite are still things, uh, and Docker as well, just great applications for you to do things your way using their proprietary software. However, the QNAP still has a great number of applications. I'd say they've got at least 80% of the same kind of applications, and the ones that they don't have, they have support of third-party apps too. Things like QMaggie, I've made comparisons with Synology Moments because both platforms have 
a photo recognition, facial recognition and cataloging tool to allow you to sequence through decades of photos and create searchable and cata um, um, cataloging um, folders that you can browse through at your leisure with the QNAP giving you more control of folders and letting you access how things how you want thanks to multimedia console. On top of that, you've got the ability to recognize more things. It seems in my test, I've always shown that QMaggy has been able to identify more things. So that's trees, food, um, uh, locations, landscape, items, uh, objects. It is, has more kind of breakdowns of what it can identify. A classic example I did was with regards to drinks. I put some photos of night out with the friends on a Synology NAS and moments recognized drinks, alcohols, cocktails, that sort of stuff. But the QNAP recognized individual cocktails. It went a little deeper. It recognized beer. It recognized like different drinks. It recognized certain cocktails. It was just a little bit more detailed in its approach. And another area is to do with virtualization. Synology has a great virtual machine app, virtual machine manager. But they don't think the 218 Plus has sufficient oomph to carry this app forward. So it's not included. But the QNAP arrives with support of its own virtualization station platform and Linux station too. So you can create Linux VMs as many as you want or as many as the hardware can handle, which let's be honest, is going to be a vast amount, as well as creating virtual machines, even giving you the ability to download a ready-made Windows VM from their own software. And although both of them support containers, I've got to give that advantage there for virtual machines to the QNAP because of its support of um, Linux station and its virtualization station being supported on this device. Turn that back around. Um, let's revisit that point about surveillance too. If you're looking at buying a NAS for surveillance needs, the Synology software I still believe is that little bit better, but QVR Pro is real, real good. It's good and you've got eight camera licenses with this device, whereas the Synology only gives you two. So if you're gonna use lots of cameras, you're going to end up spending another 30 to 40 quid a pop, including tax, for each individual extra camera. And a lot of you may be put off by that. The QNAP application, again, mobile apps, client apps, and it can be accessed via the web browser, although you cannot access live camera feeds via the web browser like you can with the Synology. It still has a great control panel. And the QVR Pro client, and I've only really experimented with the Windows client, is very, very good. And once you get the hang of it, although it's not quite as intuitive as the Synology one, it's still a very, very good tool to run on your Windows or Mac system to control your control deck. And remember, you've got USB port and an HDMI port there for connecting large scale cameras, uh, large scale monitors and keyboards and mice so you can control everything locally as well as have everything access remotely. In terms of backups, both of them support a multi-tiered backup strategy, everything from USB to NAS to NAS backups, utilizing real-time remote replication or RTRR, as well as widespread cloud support as well. So both of them can be um, synchronized with cloud platforms with the Synology arriving with support of Active Backup Suite and their own backup, um, Hyper Backup, whereas the QNAP utilizes Hybrid Backup Sync now in version three. And I've got to say, between the two of them, I prefer the QNAP approach. The QNAP one just seems that little bit more intuitive. They've, uh, you know, just for a change, when I would normally say that Synology keeps things chewable, friendly, and graphical and easy, the hyper, um, Hybrid Backup um, Sync 3 is definitely, of the two, the most user-friendly and the most diverse. I've used it several times. I've done about two or three videos on it where I've done USB backups and NAS to NAS backups. And if you look at my series of videos I did in February, where we talked, uh, or in January and February, while we were talking about synchronizing different NAS platforms, so if you wanted to migrate data between an Asus Store, a TerraMaster, a QNAP, and a Synology, Hybrid Backup uh, Sync 3 was by far the easiest of them. Now, there are loads of other apps, both supporting first and third party from both of these brands. But ultimately, what this comes down to is how you're going to use it. Because like many of my videos, the software is key. Having all that great hardware is going to be, you know, fantastic stuff. But if you can't run the software that you want to run, it's not going to be the best world for you. That said, the upgradability, the HDMI port on that one, and the up higher upgradable memory are things you just simply cannot ignore. So, if it's your first ever NAS, both of these two are going to be very, very attractive to you. And I think 
the choice comes down to software. Are you going to be using your software or theirs? Because that's the key thing here. Because upgradability is going to be good, but you need to know that upgradability is going to be handy if you're still using the device two, three, four, five years down the line. And with both of them arriving of two years of manufacturer's warranty, you are going to be thinking of the future. So if you aren't very tech versed and you don't know quite what you're doing with a network attached storage device, you're probably going to be a lot more comfortable with the Synology because it will feel like it's holding your hand a lot more. But that's not always the best thing because even if you're a little bit more technolo technologically versed, have some networking history or just know your way around tech, good for you. You're going to have a better experience with the QNAP because you're getting better hardware to work with and therefore you can create a system that runs around you, not the other way around. I hope you've enjoyed this comparison. I kind of I didn't want to basically tell you which one to buy because let's face it, Everyone is different. I will be comparing this new QNAP against other NASes as well as long as its predecessor. I will be comparing against the Nimbus Store 2 and the Terramaster F2 in the next week or so. So do check those out. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If not, do let me know. But click like if you did. Click subscribe to learn more. And I'll see you next time.